Business. This is what I would say, guys. You know, we have railed at this table before against Wickard v. Filburn, that, that Supreme Court decision that said that the wheat that you grow for your private oh, consumption yeah. can be regulated, even though it never crosses state lines, regulated under the Interstate Commerce Clause. Fast forward a number of decades, the Controlled Substances Act, which is the, the, the sort of panoply of federal laws all under one big, massive bad law that makes all of these substances illegal, is a house built upon yeah, the improv. Hold wheat, on. Wheat is a house built upon. High. A house okay. built upon the foundation of Wicker v. Filburn. And when I talk to other conservatives about this, I feel like I'm just fighting against the perception. They're not looking at it from a, from a perspective of principle. The federal government does not have the right to do this, and it should not be in this But business. conservatism is also about conserving, and it is about, you know, conserving tradition. And traditionally, we don't have a social, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, smoking pot is not widely socially accepted the way having a glass I of wine over that. dinner is. Well, you know, I don't run in your circles. <laughs> <laughs> Matt McCall, but you know, conservatism really is also not making these huge social changes so dramatically that could have deleterious effects that we don't know the full extent. Let of. me suggest we have a tradition much, much, much more important than that than the than the you know um, social ramifications of uh, of smoking marijuana, and that tradition is individual freedom. The founders, here, here. the founders were, I mean, you know. So then why the only thing that made us yeah, the only thing that made, heroin, meth, yeah, the only thing that made us different the only th reason people came here originally is to escape the kind of nanny state that we're talking about creating here and that we have unfortunately recreated in so many ways I think that tradition is far more important than the other one and you know I'm not the, let's think about William F Buckley <laughs> of course if he is not the the, the soul of conservatism, you know, certainly uh, the the thinking part of <coughs> conservative of conservative activity, and and he was, you know, clearly in support of it. I mean, he talked about it all the time. Milton Friedman, um, uh, recently, Pat Robertson, for heaven's Pat sake. Pat Robertson, Congressman, I'm, I'm with you on this, and I know I know you have a counterpoint to this, but really quickly, I just want to also put up the costs of this, the human costs and the financial costs. Let's put up a chart first of <coughs> marijuana arrests in the United States. Now, you have to understand, this isn't just people that are going to be spending time um, that are going to be spending time in jail as a result of this. This is man hours. This is law enforcement attention. This is a huge drain upon our, our, our services at the federal and at the local level because they're all enforcing these drug laws. Um, and and, you know, when you look at that, you also have to look at uh, how much money is being spent on the war on drugs. Let's put that up really quickly. It'll show you that we are talking about billions of dollars, uh, billions of dollars a year in order to fight a war that we think we're not winning. So uh, if you want to come from the ideolog it, ideological level. It, though, if we do, in this amendment, if we do make marijuana legal in Colorado, it's not that there wouldn't be any government regulation because you're still regulating yeah. it to the point where and people only it. have one ounce. You are taxing it, but you're still regulating the use yeah. of it versus the non-use of it. So yeah. it's not that government would play no role. No, it's, and, and certainly it, is illegal, it would use. be illegal to sell it to minors. Just, again, absolutely right. Look, if you want to protect kids, and that, this is what we hear all the time about, you know, the opposition says, but the kids will get it. If, if you legalize it, it'll become more available to kids. You know, there's a reason why you don't see people on the street corner near an elementary school saying, come here, little girl, you want to buy a bottle of beer? <laughs> Doesn't happen, right? Because, of course, the risk-reward ratio is completely out of whack there. We, Why should you do it? We had an expert on the cartels on our show yesterday talking about how you're never going to get rid of this problem when you can buy something for a thousand to two thousand dollars at its source of origin exactly. in, in Colombia and South sell it at street level for fifty to hundred thousand yeah, dollars. Congressman, you make it. You're, you're saying it's an individual freedom issue. Yes. But why are you drawing the line at marijuana then? Why not heroin, meth, cocaine, or whatever states else comes can, down the pipe? States can make. But, but I want the Congress okay. to because, answer, because, why draw well, the line. Well, let me tell you that indeed. States are the laboratory of democracy. There we go. And in, if you want to start someplace and find out exactly what will happen here, okay, because, because I believe I know how this will play out, but I'm more than willing to say, let's try this. I, you know, let's, let's get the public, and, and first of all, we've done essentially this in Colorado with medical marijuana. I mean, it's pretty easy to obtain. I mean, I'm not sure. I, th I heard something like a hundred and some thousand cards have been distributed saying, 
you you know, know, the, I'm the, sick. The federal prohibition <laughs> And it's on working. This, yeah. You know, it's working. So you even, ask you about that. But, instead of ecstasy. But the, yeah. the federal no, prohibition I'm, on this is such that even though it's been proven that for people who are suffering from cancer, people with glaucoma, that, that THC, the active drug in marijuana, is very helpful to them, people, the federal government still will not even discuss this. They still want to ban it. I mean, could you imagine if they said, oh, well, uh, morphine is derived from, from opium, and, and we don't like opium, so people can't get morphine who need it for surgery, need it, you know, on the battlefield. I mean, this is crazy. But and it's you're, regulated. You're, you're, you're and it's just, morphine, it's just because you of the can't perception. Get opium. You can't go to an opium den. So we do have regulations on morphine that it is not widely available. It's available in not very a blanket narrow ban. instances. Not and a blanket ban. There are regulations on the marijuana, too. And, and let's talk about the medical marijuana in Denver. I just got back there a few days ago. There's more uh, medical marijuana dispensaries than there are Starbucks, twice as many. Yeah. Is this uh, because there's been an explosion of glaucoma? No, obviously people want to use it recreationally. But, but my question, on top of that is, have you seen an uprise in arrests? Have you seen an increase in, in trouble because of that? No, you no. haven't, have you? As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, any cop you talk to on the beat, if you can get them away from, you know, the... the, you know, the this is true. <laughs> you know, the, their fellow policemen at, at, are in the station. If you can get them alone, especially if you're sitting with them and having a couple of drinks, you might get them to tell you, and which they have to me over and over again. Give them a choice between stopping somebody on the street who's been drinking and who's, you know, weaving or whatever, and, and stopping somebody who's been smoking marijuana. They're going to take the latter every single time because you don't face the kind of violent activity that is always, or not always, but often there with the, uh, the person who's under the influence of alcohol. If, if they go to a domestic dispute, alcohol gets involved, it turns into a, uh, you know, oftentimes a very, very violent situation. Marijuana is not the same way. I'm going to tell you something, and, and maybe this is one reason why I'm here uh, and talking about it. My dad was an alcoholic, and he was a violent alcoholic, and I know what my mom and my brothers and I went through as a result. And I'll tell you right now, I'd give anything if he had just smoked pot. 